Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully, everything will start here in a second. Tim is charging his piano. <laughs> Probably. Uh, or seeing if YouTube is actually going to work, but we will see. Hopefully, it does. Um, okay. Hopefully, come on, YouTube. And it did. All right. Good. It's so exciting when things actually work, isn't it? <laughs> And it is the Ides of March, which doesn't really actually mean much, but you would expect maybe more to go wrong today than any other day, perhaps. Hello, your piano teacher Tim here at wonderful 1 p.m. As you can see, it's actually sunny outside instead of um, terrible <laughs> and dark. Um, so I think this time is going to work a lot better for me, but I'm not going to talk about that too much since we're all here to begin learning and today is i'm just going to give you as you can surmise from the title a list of um, exercises and pieces you should learn as a beginner um, in order which i have a lot of you know a lot of students ask me about okay um hello um, i'm just going to quickly say hello to some people and then we're going to get right on to it uh christine welcome here i believe it's your first time Thank you so much for coming. We got Barbara here. Unfortunately, Barbara can't stay, but thank you for coming. Glad you could catch us uh, here in a second. I love GB's comment. Uh, Tim is charging his piano. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Um, from Germany, my first time here. Always thought your show is at nighttime here. Yeah, it was, and now it's not. Uh, 5 p.m. evening in England. Okay, so it looks like it's a pretty good time for um, some different types of people coming in i know that we're going to lose some of the crowd um that could make it before but um i i think we'll also on the other end grab some people and you get the recording anyway so luckily for that we got john draybach and um hi ten uh, i can't pronounce your name i'm sorry and then lee uh fan is here first time here welcome out lee i believe i've seen you in the comments your name looks familiar to me you've either signed up i could be wrong uh through the website or somewhere i've seen your name i recognize it uh sue mariner could make it great all right everybody the collector's corner and um my and mamar at 11 30 p.m so it's not too bad where you're at okay we're gonna get started now i just like to say hi to people um you know before we start so uh let me get the facebook stream started it will take less than a minute hopefully it will and so just feel free to say hello in the chat in the meantime and then we're gonna get started with the lesson Hello students, welcome out to our classroom, Piano Lessons on the Web. If it's your first time here on Facebook, make sure you like our page. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You have all notifications turned on by hitting that bell button because we have new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat. All right, we're going to get right into the lesson here. Let me... Um, oh, you're, you're one about video game scores as Lee, but, uh, let me get uh, started here. Let me get the, um, the notes I have so we can get started into the right place, get into a good rhythm here. So just another couple of seconds and we'll be right on our way. Um, okay. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Well, let's see. Maybe it's loading. It's a PDF, and here it is. Okay, it just takes a second to load for some reason. Even though you think a PDF would load very quick. I think it's 2019. All right, uh, just give me another couple of seconds. This should be the only example like this. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let me do a little bit of an intro, and then we're going to get right on into it. 
Your piano teacher, Tim, here, and today I'm going to give you a list of pieces and exercises you should be practicing as a beginner student in the order you should be playing them. The first type of exercise you should be playing is the five finger exercise. Now, I've included a link to all these in the description for you, but the great thing about these and why you should start with these more than anything else is, oh, this is not turned on. That's a problem. <laughs> Just give me a second here. The reason you should start with these and not any other exercise um, to begin with is that you want to get used to playing and getting your hands on the keyboard in a certain set position. And the first position you're gonna learn about is in C position. And all these exercises involved are developing the most basic coordination between both hands just really moving up and down with your five fingers. Believe it or not, if you're a beginner, it's something you're gonna wanna spend time on. And each exercise involves, you know, the same basic pattern, just like in a different order, perhaps. And what I recommend you do is um, go through maybe the first page of these. Like I said, it's all about getting used to playing in, you know, getting your hands on the keyboard and playing simple exercises. You can obviously continue into um, the other pages if you wish, um, but you definitely want to do get a few of these under your belt before we go on to the next exercise. Actually, the next exercise is pieces that I think you should learn. So what kind of pieces should you first learn as a beginner? Well, Okay, I'm just going to check in the chat really quick just to make sure everything is operational and working appropriately. Um, okay, it looks pretty good to me. If there's ever a problem with um, the audio or the video, please let me know and be like really obnoxious about it in the chat so I know, um, you know, if there's a problem or not. Okay, that's working pretty good. Okay, um, on to these pieces. So let me get this up for you. And then uh, anybody who's new here, if you don't know how the channel works, we do the live streams and then the following week, like I, I edit them together um, and piece them together and cut out all the additional parts and make it like a really nice, succinct lesson. Um, all right, we're ready for this next one here. The first types of pieces you should be practicing are nursery rhymes. And again, because I'm so nice, I have included a link to some free ones for you over um, with our friends, makingmusicfun.net. I actually don't know if they're my friends or not. They probably don't even know I exist. But there, it's a wonderful website. Um, some of these you have to pay for, but as you can see, most of them are, you know, um, free, which is great. The ones I recommend you start with, and the reason nursery rhymes are so great for what you're trying to do as a beginner is that they involve simple notes and simple rhythms. You're not gonna be moving up and down the keyboard a whole lot, which is something you wanna avoid when you're first starting out. You know, some people jump right into free release. As you can see, there's a lot of hand position changes right away. So taking a look at this piece here, I recommend you start with uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. This one's perfect. You know, you get your hand right in the C position here. The same position you use for those exercises I just mentioned. So start with Mary Had a Little Lamb. Let's go back to the website here so I can recommend what um, other ones you start with. Um, Mary Had a Little Lamb is great to start. Um, let's see, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, also a great one to start out with. Um, you can really start out with any of these. Some of them, um, Row 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 Your Boat is great. You wanna look over here because they are listed as levels. And you would want to start with the level ones first, and then maybe do level twos, level three. So it's, it makes a lot of sense. And then down at the bottom of the page, as you can see just on page one, Itsy Bitsy Spider, also great to start out with. There's also a next page. So there's tons and tons and tons of these to learn, which is excellent. So the first types of pieces you should be playing are what? Nursery rhymes. Not high-level classical pieces, at least not for most of us. All right, let's get on to the next exercise I recommend you learn after these.
All right, what is next? Scales? Okay, great. Let me get this up. There we go. Okay, one of the first exercises between besides the five finger ones you should learn are scales. Now, scales are very rudimentary. Um, they're not the most exciting to play, at least for most people, but they are so, so important uh, mainly because, and link's in the description for you, by the way, mainly because they involve playing the same note between both hands. And these will actually start to get you to play out of that standard five finger position. So that's why I've listed these after the other ones I've mentioned. And they really just involve starting from one note, like C, and then playing all the notes in between to the next C. You have to be a little bit more careful because, you know, after the C scale, they get a little more complex. The, the reason I picked um, this, this sheet to include in the description and to show on the stream here is they actually write in where the flats take place for each and sharps take place for each scale so each scale has a collection of either sharps or flats you have to be careful of this one also includes um, the fingers that you should be using um, so remember finger one is always thumb no matter what hand and you count from thumb to pinky one two three four and five one two three four and five so they tell you what you should be um, doing with those obviously um, if you're just starting out i recommend learning these hands separate and not hands together hands separate real slow and then do it hands together okay on to the next pieces there are more pieces you should learn as a beginner after you've learned some of your scales. I recommend you learn at least um, all of the major scales. You don't have to learn them all at once, but get started on your scales before moving on to these. Okay, I'm gonna check in with the chat really quick. Like I said, I just like to make sure everything is working. And, all right, cool. It looks like pretty good. Hello, everybody. I will say hello to a lot of you once the main lesson's over, but I want to continue here. Uh, ba -ba -ba, here we go. Under. <laughs> After you learn some scales, you got some under your belt, you want to learn these next. And these are easier versions of classic piano pieces, not necessarily classical pieces. That's a specific um, genre of music. But, but the pieces that, what I mean by that is pieces that like everybody has known and heard before. As you can see, we got Fur Elise. Um, now that one's a level three. Again, you want to start with the level one pieces first. But as you can see here, you got Minuet and G by Bach. You have Happy Birthday. Um, happy Birthdays. You know, it's actually right where we need it to be for the example we're doing. But the, you don't want to learn Happy Birthday right off because Happy Birthday involves um, a bit more hand movement than some of the e uh, other ones. But not overly complicated at the same time. So go through these. I don't necessarily have a recommended order in which you should learn all of them. Um, just go through and learn um, the level ones. And again, as you can see, there's a huge collection here, makingmusicfun.net, um, a link in the description, of course. And you can click on the next page and continue. So learn as many of these as you can. Honestly, if you want to learn all the level ones and then all the level twos that are listed, all the level threes, fours, and fives, um, feel free to do that. But that's what I recommend you do after you've done Five finger exercises, nursery rhymes, scales. You want to learn easier versions of classic piano pieces. All right, on to the next exercise. Before I introduce the next exercise, if you found the lesson helpful so far, make sure to smash that like button. It lets other people know this is a quality lesson they can learn from as well. Okay, on to hand and exercises. Oops. Here we go. Hmm. 
give me a second here, just getting this up. Here we go, perfect. Okay, hand and exercises. Now, what are these about? Well, let me show you. These involve playing a set pattern. I guess I should show you at the piano, huh? A set pattern. And each time you just move that pattern up one note, up the keyboard. And each pattern is designed to train a certain part of your hand. These are sort of like the five finger exercises I was telling you about, except there's a bit more going on now. They're great for getting um, used to playing your hands in sync and playing just different patterns. And like I said, they work out each a different part of your hand. You can find these over on handin-online.com. Of course, I'm gonna include a link for you in the description. I recommend learning at least 10 of these to start out with. And what I like to do with students is I like to learn um, the first 10, and then I like to go back and I like to um, relearn the first 10, like not really relearn them, but play them again, and then get them up to speed using a metronome. So eventually you wanna get faster and faster, but you don't wanna jump to that speed right away. All right, I've got more for you. Okay, gonna check back with the chat real quick. Yeah, be sure to click that like. Oh, we got 47 people here, which is almost towards the top of, of the max number we've had. We've had like 55 before. So you know what, this time of day might be better. I know it works better for me, so we're gonna keep doing it. Um, all right, I got some more here for you, like I said. Yeah. Perfect. So let me get it up. Now this website I'm going to show you makes you wait like 15 seconds before you can open it. So just give me 14, 13, 12 more seconds, 10, 11, 10, 9. I know this is exciting. 8, 7. One. All right, it's ready. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, school of velocity. Here we go. Okay, now these exercises you want to learn after you've learned everything else I've mentioned today, or at least gotten started on them, and they are charity exercises in what we call the school of velocity. Um, or German, however you pronounce that. Uh, all right, and as you go through, there's a bunch of these. They just kind of show you the general exercise in the beginning, but you want to start here. The great thing about these, and why I love these so much, is they combine a lot of different aspects of playing piano and things you should know um, and learn while playing piano, such as chords. The other chords appear in the left hand. Of course, there are other exercises that change this up. But the great thing is they combine chords along with scales. So you're getting used to those scale finger crosses and playing chords at the same time. This is a lot more of a real world example of what you're going to see in a piece. Um, of course, these are more uh, like exercise-y kind of things. Uh, if that, that's even a word. But anyway, um, as you can see now, like number two has it swapped. Now you're doing scales with the left hand, chords with the right hand. So it really does a great job, um, each exercise at working out a different thing. Like number three here is all arpeggios. And believe me, you're going to see all of these patterns in your real music a lot. And I mean a lot. So... Cherney School of Velocity, check it out. Links for you in the description. Okay, let me think about what else I want to say. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm, st I'm sticking around for the live stream. I'm not ending the live stream. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give a 
uh, an outro for when I, like I said, I edit the video together and then release it a week later. Um, I'm going to do an outro now. I'm not leaving the live stream, so just keep that in mind. It's going to seem like I am, but I'm not. Um, all right. These exercises are enough, I think, to keep you busy for some time, and hopefully it's alleviated some of the con concerns or uh, questions you've had about what you should be working on and in what order to progress properly. If you want me to make a follow-up lesson to this, continuing basically with more exercises, perhaps for maybe more intermediate students, let me know in the comments. I would love, love to hear from you there. Okay, and then let me do this real quick. And make sure to check out the courses over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, where I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn about not just piano, but music theory, improvisation, rhythm, ear training, and anything else I felt you would need to become a well-rounded piano player and musician. If you like what you see over here on the YouTube channel, you're going to love these courses because not only do you get instructional videos, but you also get uh, notes that accompany that go along with them worksheets, sheet music, real sheet music to play, and assignments so that you're not only just learning each topic, because on YouTube we just kind of learn something and then move on and then learn something and move on. This is a real structured way to learn everything in order, but also with all the material, like you'll learn about um, a topic and then you'll also get an opportunity to practice and master that as well. So that's the main draw of why you should sign up for these courses. You can obviously check out um, any of the other features here for you. One thing I want to tell you is that um, I recommend you buy a course pack if you decide to get some courses. Now you can sign up for courses individually, but you'll get a much better deal if you sign up for a course pack. So as you can see, the beginner's pack has four courses. So you just click on view pack. You can actually click on any of the courses you want to take a look at and you can look at the course description page where um, you can see basically what the course is going to cover, how long it's going to take to finish the course, and what you need to know ahead of time. Now let me think about and make sure you're subscribed. You have all notifications turned on because we have new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat. Also be sure to check out some of the other lessons on the channel already. There are a lot of them and they can really help you out. So check out these. All right, everybody. Now I'm going to answer some questions and say hi to people and everything else. Hey, Jeremy's here. How you doing, Jeremy? Um, okay. Let's see how everybody is doing. Remember to leave a like if you liked our video today. Uh, okay, scrolling up. There's a lot of people to say hello to. I don't know if I'm going to get to everybody. Roxana says, hi, time. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm sure you meant to write Tim. You know what's funny? Sometimes I'll type out my own name and I'll write time. I don't know what it is. They're just like linked in my brain. Um, <laughs> so good to see you again, Roxana. Uh, okay, 5 p.m. That's not bad. It's not bad. So it looks like it's a decent time for a lot of people. Um, okay. 1 p.m. from New York. Yep. That makes sense as to what time it is for me. Uh, Mr. Ventura says, hi, from the Dominican Republic. All right. Hi, Mr. Ventura. And so many other people, Eddie, um, a lot of people look like it's your first time out here. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome back anytime. In fact, I would love to see you come back. We're going to meet again Sunday at the exact same time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're here live, whatever 25 minutes ago was for you, that's when we're going to meet on Sunday. We're also going to be meeting Fridays and Sundays um, ongoing. So be sure to check that out. Mr. Ventura says you didn't say hi to me. Well, I apologize. When I get started with the lesson, I don't look at the chat as much, and then I try to catch up if I can. Sometimes there's too many um, comments, which is fine. That's a great problem to have. Um, we got Pratt here. I'm just going to call you Pratt. Welcome, Pratt. Glad to have you with us. Um, I'm the one that always loved to talk to you about video games. That's right, yeah. Uh, X-Boy, hello, X-Boy. Welcome out. 
Christina, he isn't. I don't know. Are you a white supremacist? Like, what kind of question is that? No. He isn't. I like how Christina knows what's up. I've never even commented on anything like that on the channel before, but Christine knows what's up. Uh, GB, Mr. Ventura. Uh, let's see. Hi, I'm from a third world country. Oh, well, there's no problem with that. Can I get your lessons in PDF? Um, well, the courses have PDFs in them, but you can't get all my lessons in PDF. That would be that would be hard to do. So sorry, but no. Hello from India. Welcome out. Glad to have you with us. We got uh, hi from UK Oxford. Hey, says Christopher. Hello, Christopher. Toronto. Um, DD. Watch a lot of different people here today. Carl's here, uh, which is really awesome. We got Avi here. Hello, Avi. Hi, Tim. In all caps. Long time no see. I agree. Glad to have you with us once again. One thing I want to mention real quick. Um, how should I do this? Hold on. Hold on. Bring you back to my website just for a second here. because I have something important to tell you other than my courses. All right, so by the way, one thing I didn't mention in my little pitch there was there is a spring sale going on right now. I have to update the website for it to see it there, for to show it there, just saying it's a spring sale. But the, the prices are up, like the sale is going on. It just hasn't officially started yet. I just wanna let you guys know that. Um, that'll probably end somewhere in the beginning of April. I'll let you know a, a confirmed date soon. But what I wanna tell you about is over my website, uh, you click on the community page, and um, one thing I recommend you do is if you are interested, I know I need to change the time up here, I just realized, um, is if you fill out this form, you're gonna get an email reminder 30 minutes before we meet. I might start doing it an hour before we meet just to give you a little bit more time. But anyway, if you want an email reminder before we meet, fill out that form right there. Um, below that is actually more important because they have the calendar, they, me, has a calendar of what we're talking about and when. So um, today, obviously, we're doing um, what we're doing today, but next, uh, not next, but on Sunday, it's the proven methods to increase your piano finger speed. This is gonna be a, um, a lesson on like exercises and ways, like the title's pretty self-explanatory, but, and, and different things I recommend you do to be able to play up and down the piano more effectively increase your finger speed since a lot of people want to know that and um, I find that it's very easy to make mistakes when trying to do that. Okay, uh, next Friday, make your piano pieces sound amazing using articulations, uh, which are like staccatos, legatos, they're all the little details that make music what it is other than notes. Um, and then next Sunday on the 24th, man, we're in the springtime. Isn't it great? It's, it's warm outside today. I can see that it's getting sunny out. I'm going to go take a walk in the park probably later today at some point. Hopefully I'll get a chance to do that. Um, uh, my process for learning a piece anyway, I got side to side rail there. Um, Sunday is what we're going to be talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to walk you through every single one. The only thing I want to talk about is the student showcase on the 31st. I may cancel the student showcase for this month only because I took a two week break and now I don't know if I'm gonna get enough submissions for that um, to do it. But if you don't know what the student showcase is, is that throughout the month I collect um, or students send me recordings of them playing. Um, ideally the recording should be anywhere between one and uh, I wouldn't make it go any more than 10 minutes, but between one and like seven minutes is probably ideal. If it goes past seven a little bit, it's fine. Um, but basically it's a recording of you playing. It's totally optional, by the way. Obviously I can't force you to do anything, <laughs> but basically you, you make a recording, you um, either upload it to YouTube or you send it to me um, through Facebook or my email, tim at lessonsontheweb.com. And um, I'll collect these recordings throughout the month. And then on the student showcase, what I do is I review the recordings. Don't worry, I'm pretty nice. I'll let you know what I like and some things you can improve on. You can think about it as like a, um, a mini one-on-one um, -on -one lesson. You know, I'm reviewing just your stuff um, for a short period of time. But anyway, it's the showcase of everybody playing. I review what you play. And then we move on to the next person, on to the next person. So feel free to submit recordings to me either through um, the Facebook page, 
the lesson piano lessons on the web dot piano lessons on the web Facebook page or my email Tim at lessons on the web dot com. So I just want to tell you about that if you're new here, which it looks like a lot of people are, which is fantastic. All right. Hey, we got a $5 super chat. I think that's from Jeremy, if I recognize. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate your support. Anybody else, if you feel like leaving a super chat, you like what we did today, uh, feel free to do that. Another great way of um, supporting the channel is also to buy courses over on the website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. And we got more people here today than usual. I mean, we've had this number of people before. But I'm kind of thinking that maybe this time is a better time overall, uh, which is great. Uh, hello to Carl. Hello to Sally. I'm just going to go down the list here. Christine, I said hello to already. Um, okay. The Bird 101. Oh, so you're watching me on PS4, uh, Lee. That's pretty cool. Hey, we got a $50 super chat of, of NOK. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but from Peter. Thank you so much, Peter. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, I'm going down here. It looks a lot brighter in the office now. Do you have windows or did you get more lights? The good, good question from Bird101. Well, it is one of the benefits of streaming at 1 p.m. because it's actually light outside. So there's actually light coming through my window. Um, I think I did, if I remember right, since the last time I've seen you. Yeah, I do remember. I have moved the lights a little bit closer to me. Um, so overall, yeah, there's a lot more light in here, which is pretty cool. I think it looks better. Okay. Uh, uh, Christine asks, is there a subscription for this? Because I get a lot of these types of webs. So, the, so this right now, what you're watching, the live stream... You don't have to pay anything for in the YouTube channel. Um, although they are rolling out like a paid membership thing for YouTube channel. I think it's supposed to be kind of like Patreon, but I don't have it on my channel yet, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but yeah, the courses over on my website, they are paid courses, um, but there's more to them. Like I said, not only do you get videos, you get a lot of other things with them to help you um, learn. And also like if you're a beginner and you haven't seen all my YouTube stuff yet, and you want a solid foundation of the basics. My course, there's the beginner's pack spe specifically, I can't talk, uh, over on my website will help you get that solid foundation. Um, and then if you, you've learned from a lot of my stuff already or you know a lot already and you're looking to take that to the next level, my intermediate and advanced packs um, is probably what you want to check out. And if you have any questions, just email me and I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. One thing I need to start doing is, is bringing a drink and putting it over here like on this table that you guys can't see. Um, scared to see you. I am advanced. Why are you scared to see me, Christopher? Scared to see you. That's that's <laughs> Nobody's ever said that to me before. Um, uh, I am an advanced piano player. Well, that's good. Maybe you should send in something for the... Um, the student showcase. Okay, paid subscription, yeah, for that. Uh, love your teaching, says Michael. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, Lee Fan says, I'm too hasty with learning. I'm currently learning on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but that's cool. And then I get bored and jumped straight to <laughs> the theme of love from Final Fantasy IV. Well, do your best. I understand that some of the beginner um, pieces and exercises can be boring. Stick with them the best you can. It's okay to branch out a little bit, uh, but if you feel like you're starting to play things that are way beyond your ability, you want to scale it back for sure. Uh, let's see here. Randy's here, everybody. Thank you for coming out, uh, Randy. Tim, quite a treat to see a live class this time of day. Well, Randy, I'm glad you said that because the live classes from now on will be this time of day. They're going to be at 1 p.m., Eastern Standard Time instead of 8 p.m. So we're not having another one tonight. I've just moved the time. It works so much better for me. I have a lot more energy this time of day. And then like after the live stream, I didn't even think about this when I was planning it. Well, the one part I did was once the live stream's over here, I can 
continue on my day, you know, I can, if I, gee, hang out with friends, which is something I need to do more of, actually, um, or, or just anything. Like, I, I have the whole day is mine. But the, the benefit I didn't consider is that now that I have the rest of the day, I can actually edit today's video uh, today, and I don't have to wait, and then, like, you know, so, so I think it's going to be more productive as well, which is great. Uh, okay, Christine. Thanks for coming, Christine. We got uh, thanks. Okay, I'm not a beginner, but I'm going to watch to support Tim. Great. All right, we got a ton of comments here. I, I apologize if I ever miss your comment, but, you know, we have so many people here, which is fantastic. Uh, Ramona says, I love your videos. Thank you very much, Ramona. I appreciate that. Uh, Adria says, hey, I'm here. All right, Adria's here. It's been a little while. I know you're here on and off. Um, let's see. Could have made my lunch a little earlier. I have trouble doing the hand and exercises in reverse. Oh, like coming down the other way. Well, that's normal. And uh, you might want to treat, because because hand and exercises involve whoops, going up ascending and then there's a part descending where they come back the other way it's the same pattern but in reverse what i recommend you do is treat them as two different exercises at first play just ascending and then play the descending as a separate exercise i know it sounds weird like why would that make a difference the difference is, is that um, when you first start especially like i can handle it no problem but when you do the ascending pattern towards the top and you reverse it's difficult because I always liken it to um, spinning in one direction we've all done this as kids and then you all of a sudden try to spin around the other direction and you can't do it um, it's I think it's a similar thing to that in the brain so what I recommend you do is when you get to the top whoops just stop for a second get your hands in line and then do the descending. Now, it's it's normal to still have trouble there. What I recommend you do is maybe even break it up hand separate. And what else am I going to tell you? You know by now probably. Go slow. So practice that second half slower. So that's what I got for it. It'll just take time and uh, it will work out. I, I know a lot of students have that problem. And so long as they go slow, it usually works out. Uh, let's see. Christine says, what? Uh, let's see. X-Boy has a lot of music emojis. Thank you for that. Hi, from Norway, says Peter. Hello from the United States. Welcome out. Glad to have you with us. Uh, let's see. Okay, this time of day works for me because I'm busy on Fridays at night. Okay, understandable in the summer. So I'll be able to come more often. That's great. You know, I, at first I was worried. I was like, oh, man, is anybody going to come to this in the middle of the day? Because I figure, like, especially in the U.S. where I am, a lot of people are at work right now. Um, but it looks like it's working out. That's great. I'm, I'm really happy about that, actually. Um, look, took a break from practice, says Randy ready to get back to it now great well perfect timing you know i'm here and you're here so we can make this work i'm from bourbonius illinois i'm just gonna call it bourbon illinois 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 sorry my my brother always calls it illinois and i'm like what's wrong with you unless it's okay to say it that way but i thought it was always illinois you're not supposed to say the yes i don't know I'm originally from PA, so that, that tells you a lot. We got potholes like the size of craters. Um, okay. Hey, wait, is Rich here? Rich is here! <laughs> Which Rich, I remember Rich used to always tell me, like, I hate daytime live streams, don't do them. But yes, no more PM streams. Well, it is PM, it's 1 PM. At least it is for me. But no nighttime streams. We're doing them now at 1 p.m. It works so much better for me. I have so much more energy at this time of the day. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's working out great. I mean, I know it's our first one, but 
I think it's great. Okay. And welcome, Rich. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Scott says, do I have any tip videos about tips on fingers? Um, probably. All right, everybody. Um, one thing I have to say is I'm not going to be able to get to everybody's comment. I apologize. Roxanne is here. Hello, um, everybody else that's here because we are – TJ's here. Welcome out, TJ, because I am getting a lot of comments here. I just don't think my voice can handle all of them. Um, so let me do this. Um, somebody asked me about finger technique, and I feel like I made a lesson recently on this, but let me look it up for you. One thing I want to tell you, this is like a pro tip, is oh, great. Thanks, AVG. Um, a pro tip for you guys is that if you type in, I don't know, like finger and then lessons on the web, you can see um, any lessons I've made on um, finger technique. So take a look here, the beginner's lesson on proper piano finger fingering. Check out that one. You might want to learn your 12 major scales um, because they're a great way to get into um, proper finger technique. Um, I'm gonna, the Sunday's lesson is going to have a little bit of finger technique in it. Um, because it's about, yeah, actually Sunday I'm going to be talking about proper finger technique as part of the lesson. So, yeah, there's another lesson coming up. But, yeah, anytime you want to learn something, um, and if I have it on the channel, just type that in, whatever you're looking for. Like, say you want to learn about the circle of fifths, so as an example, and lessons on the web, or piano lessons on the web, it's all the same. Um, you'll see all the lessons I've made on the circle of fifths. Wow, that lesson only got 856 views. Talk about bombed. <laughs> What's funny is I get it. I, that was only eight months ago. I get that much in like uh, a couple hours now. It's funny. That's good. Things have, have definitely been improving, which is great. Um, okay. Can you please make a video on the eye movements while sight reading a grand staff? The staves, reading from bottom to top and left to right, is very tricky. Um, you know, I can. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this down. Um, uh, you know what? I can make a Tuesday tip out of that. That's going to make a good Tuesday tip. So the answer is yes. So let me just write it down. And let me see. Let me get this in here for you. So just another couple of seconds here. Got to find the folder. Okay, Tuesday tip. Yeah, because that would be like a shorter video. But yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just going to say eye movement when reading music. Perfect. All right, thanks for the idea. Yeah, so yeah, that that's coming. Okay. There's a fourth person too, Adria. Or Orleans girl, uh, I feel you on the potholes. <laughs> yeah, Rhode Island has a lot of potholes too. Yeah, I think anybody, um, I know Nor Orleans is south, but anybody on the east coast, like along the coast, probably has a lot of potholes, I would think. Hello from Hong Kong. I'm not good at sight reading. Uh, I'm not good at sight reading. Too bad. Um, this is from Iceland. I'm going to call you Iceland. Um, okay. And then I'll get the richest question. Not too good at sight reading, huh? Well, let me get you a lesson here because I do have some sight reading lessons I recommend you check out. Again, guys, while I'm doing this, leave a fat like on this video. It'll help me out. Um, sight reading and then lessons on the web. So I'm going to use my pro tip to find these for you. Um, okay. Check this lesson out. I think this is a good starter lesson for sight reading. There were some more that I had listed here, but here you go. Sight reading. Check this out. Okay. Rich asks, Tim, how do you know when to play um, the bass notes as staccatos. 
if it's not indicated. I learned to play arabesque. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. My grandma, whenever she used to burp, she was used to say burpsy boon. I still don't know what that means, but I'm going to start saying it. I uh, learned how to play arabesque, and the sheet music doesn't say to play basses, staccatos. Yet when I see others playing it, they play it that way. Um, let me find arabesque, and we will take a look at it together. Yes, by Berg. Mueller, Berg Mueller, I don't know, something. I always People in the comments are always like, you pronounced it wrong. I'm like, yeah, no duh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, I know I'm not an idiot. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, yeah, 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 okay. I don't know how good of a version this is. Oh, so this has the staccatos, huh? All right, let me show you what I'm looking, working with. So this one has the staccatos in it. Um, and that's a valid question because I've come across the same thing where some versions do not have the staccatos and some do. And then it's like, yeah, the question's like, how would I know um, otherwise? That's a good question. You know what I would think about is like what kind of piece is it, right? First of all, is it a heavy piece with long melodies? Or is it a shorter kind of light piece with short segmented melodies? And this happens to be the latter of the two. You know, it has a light kind of feel to it. So if I played it like this. It, it sounds too heavy. You can just tell, and it says Allegro in the beginning, so it's a bit on the faster side. Um, you can tell it's supposed to be a little bit more upbeat, a little bit faster. Um, you can also see, I don't know if the version that you have, Rich, has the, the legato and then the staccato at the end with the right hand. But that's kind of an indicator, too, because they want you to come off of that. So the answer to your question is um, use your best judgment. Um, kind of think about what the piece is going for. So like I said, if it was a slow piece... You would probably have those chords drawn out, but since it's you know such a quick and light piece, and then whatever happens next. So use your judgment, and then if, obviously you can cheat sometimes if you're not sure, and then just look at other um, other publishers, other versions of the piece. Hey, Randy's got to run. Uh, enjoy the new time and the crowd. Me too. It's a different crowd today. I love it. It's great. Karen H is here. Wow. Karen's back. Only just picked up email to this live stream. Uh, having to listen in audio only. Um, in the midst of baking. Well, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. That's awesome to have you back, Karen. Hopefully you're doing well. You and Hannah. Uh, oh, there's birds chirping outside. That's amazing. I love that. You know, I love spring so much. Uh, it's unbelievable. I, I just feel so much more motivated when it's nice out. Um, can I play Megalovania? No. You know, I haven't even practiced it yet. This is a question from Green Green. I, I did a lesson on um, Undertale music, you know, a couple weeks ago. And I didn't get to Megalovania. Some of those, those pieces will take me some time to get. I actually have to get more back into my practice routine again now that I'm back at work um, working on the channel because I do have a lesson coming out it will it'll obviously be in April now because I have the rest of March scheduled out but in April I'm going to um, have a lesson on the easiest Chopin pieces you should learn um, which I know is kind of an oxymoron because it's Chopin but there are some Chopin pieces that aren't that bad and I'm going to be playing them for you. So I'm going to be practicing those next. I have practiced them some, but I need to get back on like a regular thing. Uh, Sue says, maybe the Arabesque Ranger left out the staccatos. Didn't feel like uh, with them in it. Creative license. It could be. 
In your courses, do you provide MIDI files? Unfortunately, no. I like to use Synthesia. You know what? I don't recommend using Synthesia to practice. And here's why is because it's fine if you're if you want to learn like a couple of pieces and you're not really interested in learning the the background to how to play piano, uh, the music theory, all that stuff. All that stuff is necessary. Learning how to read music, sight reading, all that's great because that will make you a much more versatile musician. So even if there's not a synthesia on it on YouTube, you can actually learn it on your own. The the problem with learning doing all your pieces through synthesia is it's a crutch. Uh, like I said, it's okay for one or two songs, but what it'll do is, is eventually you'll be so dependent on that, you won't be able to develop the other skills you're going to need to be able to learn pieces on your own. And that's part of the reward, in my opinion, in playing piano, is, is being a well-rounded musician. That's what my courses are about. That's what really what the channel's about, giving you the tools basically that were given to me throughout time. And my teachers this is real piano instruction so i shy away from synthesia i know about it i've i've looked at it i've had students learn pieces from it but i find that like also synthesia doesn't include um, dynamics it doesn't include articulations really i mean you can kind of get them out of there um, but when you're looking at a piece of sheet music there's so much information there um, about how to play each note that it makes your pieces sound a lot better. So the answer is no, unfortunately, but I do have good reason why. Okay. Uh, the bird one one says, "Hey Tim, still having trouble making my left hand quieter. Any tips?" Um, I feel like I made a lesson on this recently, and I'm trying to remember what it is. <laughs> or what it was, or, or am I make, am I making a lesson on this soon? Oh yeah, that lesson was canceled. It was about like balancing your hands. Um, any tips? Yeah, 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 sure. Um, or things that you can do to get better with it. I'll just give them to you now because that lesson I was gonna do and I canceled it, and then I was like, eh, do people really want this lesson? Um, and maybe they do more than I thought. What I recommend you do is. Um, as an exercise, start out with your scales. Simplify things, right? Don't jump right into all your pieces and do it that way. You know, learn your scale, say like C major scale one octave, right? Obviously you want to learn the scale first. But after you play it, see if you can play it and make the right hand a lot louder than the left hand. See, I was able to successfully do it, but it might take you a bit longer. And then on the inverse, because sometimes you'll have the melody in the left hand instead, try to play out the left hand louder. That one I have to think about a little bit more, because I'm used to playing the right hand out a bit more. So simplify it, start out with easy things like scales, and then see if you can work in that balance. Um, and then go through your pieces, and then see if you can do it maybe line by line, getting your balance a little bit better. Happy spring, Tim, says Greg. Well, thank you, Greg. We got another a week, as you know, but we're getting really close, which is excellent. Okay, Tim, will you ever do another Final Fantasy music stream? Wow, you, you've been around. Well, you've probably seen it. Um, I haven't done one of those in like two years. Or three, I, dude, I think it was three years. I don't know why I called you dude. I call everybody dude, by the way, no matter, <laughs> no matter what, um, what their name is or where they're from. Dude, um, it's been like three years. Uh, when will you ever do another one? Yeah, probably. I, I did mention in the beginning of the year that I would do more video game stuff. I don't want to shift it all to video game stuff, but I am going to start using video games more as an example to teach, you know, the stuff we're talking about. So the answer is probably. I don't have it on the schedule yet, but the answer is probably. Maybe I'll do that this summer. Peter says, I have no problem with hand and exercises, but I do have problems uh, playing hands separated. Oh, you mean like when you have different uh, things to play between each hand? Try the Cherney School of Velocity lessons. The link's in the description for you. Um, and I also mentioned it earlier in the lesson if you didn't catch that. That's probably what you want to do. If, if you're good at handing already, 
but you're not as good at playing different things between each hand, check out those exercises. That'll help you out a lot. Yeah, I really need to bring a drink in here when I do this. <laughs> Especially since it's like warmer in here than usual. Um, we're going to end here in f uh, f four or five minutes, so there's no point now. But uh, Marie says, I use your good exercise with my students, so thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Welcome, Marie. And anybody, like, there's a lot of new people here today, which it makes me feel fantastic that this time of day is working. Um, what I want you to do is make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. You have all notifications turned on. Uh, remember that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick around for a few minutes yet, but I want to make sure I get this in. And if you are interested in either getting a really solid foundation on the beginner topics or you're looking to take your existing skills to that next level, go to pianolessonsontheweb.com and sign up for my courses. There's a spring sale going on right now. Um, I'm not sure exactly when it's going to end. But it's going to go at least two weeks, I would say, to the beginning of um, April. So check that out as well. It's also a great way to support the channel here. Because without that, I wouldn't have been able to continue to do this and make a, um, a job out of it. I, should, I don't like calling it a job. Uh, a career out of it. I don't like calling it work and I don't like calling it a job because it makes it feel more like work. <laughs> more like a job um okay use anthesia just for sight reading turn off vertical bars okay well that's not as bad uh welcome desmond it'd be nice to play for uh, from music note yep so uh learn how to read music if you haven't already that will definitely help you out lee says have you ever thought about people sending you pieces to play like fan requests thought about people sending me pieces to play oh like like requesting no i don't do that and i'll tell you why because if i did that i would go insane because <laughs> i would be getting requests all the time and i still do get a lot of requests a lot and i just can't learn every piece and i i my sight reading is okay but i can't sight read some of the higher level stuff like right off the bat at least not at the speed it should be not that I'm happy with it anyway. Like, you might think it's okay. You know, he did okay with it, but I don't know. I, I think I would drive myself crazy if I did that. So sorry, but no. Now, if you want to send a recording me of you, to me, of you playing, that's great because we do the student showcase at the end of the month uh, where I re review people's playing, which, um, so yeah, the answer is yes on that side. We'll message you later, says uh, Tim. Very behind. Haven't been online much la lately, says Karen. So had no idea you were putting a live stream out at this hour. Is this hour likely to continue? The answer is ding, ding, ding. Yes, the live streams from now on will be at this time instead. I know it'll take a while for everybody to kind of catch up. Um, so, yeah, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So about an hour ago, if you're watching live from this second it's 159 my time right now um we are going to do it at this time it works so much better for me okay um rich says how did i learn how to edit and to live stream can i email you later and ask for help absolutely rich yeah. Sorry I missed your question earlier. If you're still around, the answer is yes. Um, absolutely. How did I learn how to edit, though? That's a good question. The, the, where I learned how to edit was I just, I, you know, I got, I, I edit with Adobe Premiere, um, which, you well, you can sign up for like a yearly subscription, which isn't that expensive. I think most most people can afford that, especially if you're going to use it for something that you're going to present to people, and it's important um, that way. Um, there are some free ones that you can use. But I learned basically from doing, but I also learned from YouTube, <laughs> like how you're learning from me right now. Uh, I just looked up like, oh, I wonder how you do this. I wonder how you do that. I knew nothing, and I know it shows. I knew nothing about editing videos when I first started. Nothing. Like, I didn't even know how to trim videos and piece them together, which is actually the easy part. 
Well, for the most part, that's the easy part. It's funny that it's the easy part, and it's one of the more time-consuming parts as well, especially with an hour live stream you have to go through. Okay, smash that like button. I agree. Um, all right, everybody. Wow, that's brilliant for me, too. Great. Thank you. You're welcome, Karen. Glad to have you with us. It's been a while. Glad to see you back again, at least for now. I know you're probably busy with other things, but whenever you can make it, it would be great. No problem, Tim. Thanks for answering my questions. You're really cool. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for making this channel. You're welcome. Makes me feel learning piano isn't impossible as long as you set your mind to it. So true. So true. Which says, thanks, Tim. You're very welcome. Yes, yeah, feel free to email me or um, message me over on Facebook uh, about your questions on that. And I can give you more details based on what I told you. And live streaming, you go for it, Rich. Yeah, let us know your tip. But in terms of live streaming, Rich knows, Rich, you kind of already know the the answer at least in the beginning of where i learned a live stream in that i didn't know how and um but i do have a lot of tips like if you email me i do have a lot of tips for you on how to get it right um and the first live stream was such a disaster and i remember rich was there um and what happened was somehow my microphone turned off i probably did it not knowing it and i went through like half an hour of material and with no audio and i was so mad like you, you know how i get mad now sometimes when stuff doesn't work oh so mad <laughs> um but we'll hear rich's tip here and then i think we will adjourn for today um and i just want to take the minute to thank everybody for coming out you know make sure you're subscribed you have all notifications turned on check out the courses over on the website if you have any questions let me know and I'll see you in the next lesson, but I will um, check around, wait around here for Rich's tip here because Rich always has great tips. Jeremy says, thank you, Tim. You're very welcome, Jeremy. Thank you for coming and uh, your super chat um, support. I really appreciate that. And and you answer a lot of questions for the class, which is um, I probably even appreciate, um, you know, just as much for sure. Rich says subdivide when you're sight reading. And if you don't know what subdivide is, subdivide is when you're um, breaking beats down into separate parts. In fact, I'm going to get you a link here. Um, but Rich recommends you do it while sight reading. And I'll tell you can read the comment, but I'll, I'll get to back to that in a second. Let me find this lesson for you. Um, Because I made a lesson recently that actually really took off and people really like. I got 50,000 views in three weeks, which for my channel is insane. Actually, for a lot of channels, that's pretty good. But um, check out this lesson. It's called Why You Should Always Count Rhythms Like This. Um, lesson on rhythms. Now, actually, you know what's, what's interesting is that this lesson was inspired by Rich because Rich told me um, a while back during the live stream, he was like, you should he, this is another tip he had he was like you should um always subdivide even if you're counting quarter notes because it helps alleviate confusion rather than qu counting like one two and then having 16th note three e and a four now i can do it because i'm used to it but i made this lesson based on the feedback he gave me and it turned out really well but check out that uh the link i gave you check that out um, and Rich says, uh, don't switch from counting whole notes to 16th notes. Just as I said, this was totally based on his, uh, recommendation. Count everything is 16th notes and it makes it a lot easier. Tim, do you want to play Canon and D at my wedding? You'll be my special guest. I would love to. Um, I don't know how I would work that out. If you saw, if you can somehow transport me, not not like pay for my ride or anything, but if you could somehow get it so I can stream to there, <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, the only the only thing is like I just I just don't know how that would work out for me because I've you know I've less you know students I have to teach, 
I have to run the channel and everything. So for me to go to, I think you're from New York, to go to New York and then come back might be a little bit much for me. But if you can figure out a way to do it, I'll do it. To where I can stay here. I'm also not a big traveler, to be honest. I think someday I'm going to travel more, but I don't know. Just not for me. But I do want to say yes, for sure. Uh, Karen says... Yeah, when, when are you getting married, Rich, by the way? <sighs> Sorry, I got something in my throat. Uh, Karen says, sorry, I didn't make the beginning of class. Nice to see everybody. Nice to see you as well. You're getting married too, Lee. Well, congrats for sure. So when are you getting married, Rich? I want to know. Or don't you have a date yet? But not with each other, right? That's a good question. I like that. Or a good, uh, was a good zinger there. Tim, it must be great having a profession you enjoy. LOL. Um, it is. the The only thing I wish I knew that feeling. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are in your boat, Rich. And wedding in July. Ooh, it's gonna be hot. Although you're kind of in the north, so that helps at least a little bit. Um. Yeah, you know what? I do love doing something I love to do. And certainly at points in my life, I could have turned into a direction like working in IT. Like when I first um, started the channel, I was actually, and I, I did complete the degree, I was getting my master's degree in uh, information technology, specifically information security, because I was thinking about going in that direction. Um, because I started my um, my one business where I drive to the students' houses. I'm kind of phasing that out now, doing more YouTube stuff now. But I was doing that, and it was really tough to begin with. I had like one student in my first year. I might even had two by the end of that first year. And then by the end of the second or third year, I had like 22 students. And I was like, oh, man, I think I can make this work if I keep at it. Um, but that was while like, – like the year one hit of me teaching and then I was like all right I'm gonna go back to grad school get a graduate degree because that'll help me get a job and then I can work um, I guess I mean I would have been good at that too but I don't think that would have been where my heart was but what I'm trying to get at is like there's so many opportunities in the past where I could have taken that approach um, but I didn't luckily I was living with my parents at the time so that gave me a little bit more ability in terms of like reduced financial responsibility in going towards what I really love. What I recommend for you, if you don't love your job, is start some kind of side hustle, some sort of side business. I don't know. I know you like music, um, but you could, you know, you can make your own YouTube channel, you know, doing music covers, or you could do one where you teach music. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Uh, we could do collaborations, um, but or you could teach you know piano around your area and maybe just pick up a couple of students. You don't necessarily have to have a music degree to teach piano, especially to little kids, little students, right? Um, because that stuff is so basic that a lot of people can do that. I've had college students teach little kids um, before, where they don't have a music degree. Um, so what I recommend like you do is just, and I know with the wedding and everything, you can't do it now, but um, try to start something on the side, like something like you spend just one day a week on maybe, you know, or, or have like a couple hours on one day a week and start it there. That's just how it started for me. It, it didn't start like, bang, I was into it and I had all these students and I had the YouTube channel and the YouTube channel was super successful and everything. This was all stuff that, that built on each other. Like, right, so I only had one day a week where I was teaching, and only for an hour. Uh, I only had one student at an hour lesson, or 45-minute lesson it was, actually. So I was only teaching 45 minutes a week, and I just built on that. And I had a job at the time. Actually, that's one thing I want to mention is I worked 
um, at the library in my hometown, and then I worked for another lady that she she makes like um, commemorative items. I don't know it's really hard to explain. Like like, um, like bookmarks. We we're laminating a lot of stuff and making bookmarks and medallions and stuff. Um, I did that for, like while I was doing all this other, even YouTube for a while I was I was working as well. So that's what I recommend you do is start a side hustle doing something that you'll like to do. It doesn't have to be an absolute passion of yours, but it has to be something you do enjoy doing and then see if you can build that over time. Because even if you can get it to the point where it's not your main thing, you can develop something that you truly love that you can say, okay, you know, I do, I, I do have to go to work every day. I'm, I might not like that so much. It might remind me of the movie Office Space. But I do have this thing, you know, I look forward to each week that I can do. So that's what I recommend you do. Just start something small, one, one, a couple hours a week, and then see if you can build it from there. Uh, Rich says, Tim, was it scary not having job security by working for yourself in the beginning? Um, this is how I view job security. And I think job security is always within you. And it sounds really stupid. Um, but like I said, Rich, in the beginning, I did have a job because I needed the other income and I didn't know if it was going to work. Um, it was scary not knowing if I could make it work or not. I always did know I could do it. Like I just have that belief in myself on a lot of things where it's like the only, the only factor is time. Um, but like I said, you know, it started as a side thing and grew from there. I think that's really the only way you're going to be able to make it work. Um, being that, you know, the age that you are, you're getting married, you're going to have more responsibilities and things like that. You're probably going to have kids, I would imagine, or if not, totally cool. But um, start it as a side thing and build it up and keep your job. Job security doesn't exist in my mind, especially with corporate America. And I look at it this way, right? So my risk is one and how many students I have, which is a lot now. You know, my risk is very diversified, meaning that if I lose one student, not a big deal, or a few students, like if the economy collapses, I'm not going to lose every student I have, especially now that I'm a global operation on YouTube. Um, I'm only going to lose a few students, which means I'm still going to be making some income. The problem with working for somebody else, in my opinion, there's a lot of benefits to it for sure, um, in my opinion, is that your risk is one in one. Right, you either have a job or you don't have a job. That's it. Now the cool thing about that is you can, if you keep your head up and keep working, get another job within a few months and then you have everything back again. But for me, having a job is either all or nothing. When you run a business, um, unless you really do something crazy, which I don't do, there's nothing in my personal life that could come out and destroy me. Um, unless there's something like that, you will always have something um, even if the economy collapses, um, you'll you'll have some students or some income coming in, and that'll that'll build back, you know, as the economy improves again. So that's the way I view job security. Okay, Rich says, um, "Thank you for the great advice. There's something I'd like to start doing. I'll email you later. Please do, please do. I would love to give you my input on that. I love talking business with people." Um, and ideas, not just just business and making money, but ideas that they have and making them into a reality. I also have some other people. Um, contact me through email for sure. Please do, by the way. Um, uh, because I have a list of other people that I've learned from throughout the years that are online influencers that I think you should follow and I think you should um, check out. Gary Vaynerchuk is one guy I recommend uh, he also goes by Gary V. Gary, you know how to spell Gary, G-A-R-Y, and then V-E-E. -E. If you search that up, um, you'll find and learn about Gary V. You might not, you might know about him already, but he has a lot of advice um, that's really helpful in terms of like finding your passion and starting your own thing. So yeah, um, definitely get in contact with me. I don't mind the job questions at all, for sure. I love it. I admire... Uh, um, Rich says, I admire people who work for themselves and love what they do. Well, thank you. I, that is something to be admired, I think. Um, you know, not everybody can pull that off. But yeah, get in contact with me. I'd love to talk to you about it.
definitely. Have a good day, Tim and everybody. Yeah, we're 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 over time, but the good thing about doing it this time of the day is I can do that a little bit, stay a little bit over, because the problem is doing the live stream at 8 p.m. I go to bed by like 10, 11 p.m. a lot of times, and the way my brain works is I need a solid like three hours of like just vegetating <laughs> before I can go to bed. So now I have that time. Luckily, I can spend a little bit extra with you guys. Tim, you have anybody on YouTube that inspires you? Uh, well, Gary V, I talked about. Um, I'm gonna just list these people out right now. Follow Gary V. Um, Roberto Blake. Um, Tim Schmoyer. Um, Daryl Eves. These are all like YouTube people for the most part, um, but they they're into business as well and entrepreneurial things. Um, I mean, like that. Then there's like the normal stuff. Like my dad inspires me in certain ways, and he, he's business minded. Although he, the only really business thing he ever did, he worked for a corporation his whole life, um, pretty much. And um, but he he started like kind of a side thing buying rental properties, and now he has like a, a good amount of rental properties. It's cool. And it's, it's supplying him with a good retirement uh, income, which is really cool. So that inspires me in some ways. He gets me to think about that. You know what? I don't know much about Kyle Landry. I've, I've looked at his videos. I wouldn't say he inspires me. Uh, maybe to a point he does because I do admire his work, I guess. So I guess you could say yeah. But I, I wouldn't say that I think about him on, on a daily basis. All right, everybody. I am going to cash out of here today. Some great questions here. Um, about some, you know, music and not music things. But like I said, I don't mind the business stuff at all. I love talking about that kind of stuff. And if you, um, Rich or anybody else, if you have a thing that you're thinking about doing and you want to just talk to me about it, just email me. Um, now, keep in mind, it might t take me a while to get back to you. I, I try to my best to get back to everybody. One thing I need to do this year, by the end of the year, is I need to just buckle down and hire some people again to help me with stuff. Uh, because now that I have bills and stuff, I'm like kind of hesitant to, but I really need the help. So sometimes what happens is I'll get like so many emails in at a time that I'll get to them, but some of them I'll miss. Like I'll be like, oh, I thought I got to that person. So, so anyway, if you email me and I don't get back to you within a couple of days, just email me again. <laughs> be like, hey, I just want to make sure you got it. But I, I'm hoping to fix that problem soon. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Um, I'll talk to you soon. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you on Sunday. All right. Have a great one. Tim out.